welcome back to our 3PL Summit here at Freight Waves. And in this fireside chat, we're actually going to dive into one of my favorite things to write about, and that is data and specifically how to use it within your brokerage so that you can get some type of competitive edge out of the data that is within your company and really how you're using it throughout your company as well. And I figured why not have a data and benchmarking guru himself, John Stover here, our co-founder and COO of Isometric Technologies. You might know them as ISO from, of course, a lot of the writing I've done and, and some work that we've done together as well through the radio. So, John, thank you so much for being here with us today. Excited to uh, have, chat with you one on one again. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me uh, and happy to be here. Yeah, I, and this is, I think, a, a perfect way to uh, talk about this. Uh, of course, it's not only the work that you, you're doing now for our industry, but for the longevity of your career in this industry as well. And and on that point, can you tell us a little bit about how you've seen the significance of data of bulk within brokerages and the, the logistics provider space throughout your your tenure in this industry? Yeah. And um, just for, for background, I got my start in the industry in 2007 at one of the, the big brokerages in Chicago. Um, grew up on the carrier side of the house and then uh, made my way out to the the West Coast and jumped into the digital freight brokerage scene um, at Uber. So I've seen data evolve significantly over the you know past close to you know two decades here. Um, I think initially, you know, in back in 2007, there was a lot of data available, but the applications weren't totally obvious. I think pricing was the biggest application of of data at that point. Right? It was. How do we use pricing data to uh, more accurately quote this lane or more competitively price, you know, for this customer? And um, and I think it was a lot of humans leveraging data to do day to day activities. I think as um, you know, more and more data has been um, is is accessible through you know TMS and and obviously a lot of third parties. Um, that produce valuable insights for for the industry. Um, it's begun to uh, kind of evolve a lot of those. You know, pricing algorithms is a great example. It factors in you know way more data points than um, you know back in 2007, obviously, and it's starting to like automate um, a lot of those activities. So you started to see you know humans leveraging data to be more efficient at what they're doing to data you know doing those activities, and humans are kind of checking and you know pulling levers to. Um, you know, make the 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 automation more effective. Yeah, it's almost like uh, if you go back some years, the the focus was just kind of that that number that accounting saw, right? That that pricing aspect. But now we have the capability of pulling. Uh, if we're going to talk TMSs in particular, right? All these different fields, quantifying that and being able to actually uh, e- even in pricing, like get better at that aspect, right? If we know that a certain location uh, takes forever to load or unload from timestamps that we have in systems, then we know we're probably going to have to price that load a little bit more to convince drivers right, to, to go there. So it's like this deeper version. Yeah, we've automated like what the number should be initially, but now we have like this deeper knowledge into the transaction and, and how to uh, sell the full experience of the load and not just like at that time what uh, line haul and fuel come out to be, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and that's, you know, I think one of the bigger applications from, a, you know, a, a how brokers are using that information today to educate their customers on those aspects of their business, right? Facilities being a great example. Well, and let's talk about that in particular. How do you see data improving those decisions, whether you're in a career face or carrier facing role like you have in your career or a shipper facing role as well. How have you seen those experiences change? Yeah. I mean, I think uh, leveraging data and understanding your strengths and weaknesses as an organization really unlocks um, a lot of power for the account management and customer facing roles, right? Um, understanding your power lanes, where your uh, organization is particularly strong at, where you have buying power in. Um, and demonstrating that to shippers where maybe they aren't taking advantage of that. You can lean into those, you know, more aggressively from a pricing standpoint to, you know, take advantage of that buying power, but also 
you know, understand areas that you may need to invest in from a development standpoint and pricing those accordingly, right? You don't want to aggressively, um, you know, price or undercut the market in areas where you don't necessarily have a lot of density built up. Um, so, um, I think, you know, from a customer facing what, what, you know, uh, standpoint, it's, you know, understanding your strengths, sharing that with your customers. Um, uh, you mentioned earlier, you know, all the data that's available around, you know, facilities and locations, those insights are incredibly powerful for customers too, right? A lot of customers don't have TMSs or access to that information. So, um, being able to provide that uh, that data that, you know, a lot of brokers just take as, you know, table stakes and assume that people have access to it um, is particularly valuable. Um, I think on the other side of the house, from a carrier's, uh, carrier standpoint, it's also, you know, leveraging data, understand your underlying carrier strengths um, and weaknesses, you know, selling those uh, strengths back across to the sales side, right? Um, and acting on, you know, basically a sales arm on behalf of your carriers inside your organization to bolster that partnership. Um, I think, you know, uh, understanding the, you know, service levels and service level expectations of your customers and matching that up with your carrier strengths um, is critical um, in streamlining the, you know, sourcing efforts, right? If you know that you have a carrier who's, you know, maybe uh, a little bit challenged at hitting strict on time delivery appointments. Don't book them on, you know, a, a you know, a critical uh, customer delivery into a Walmart. Right. Um, so I think it's, uh, you know, leveraging data to basically match up strengths and weaknesses with the customer's expectations um, is a huge opportunity on the carrier side. Yeah, especially that service level aspect. We'll, we'll get into a little bit later in this chat, too, is it's, that's really your expertise as well. I want to I want to talk about some challenges, though, with with data. I don't want to paint this picture that you could easily get uh, a, a clear advantage from just uh, realizing the data that's at your finger uh, at your fingertips within your company. What comes along with trying to I don't want to say manipulate, but work with data, uh, collect data, uh, make sure that you're you're showcasing. That, uh, uh, data that's not biased. What goes into that experience? What challenges come from that from from your experience as well? Yeah, I mean, I think at a baseline, you know, the accessibility to the data and understanding the nuances in the data and how that, uh, how your operating procedures uh, impact what you see in the data is huge, right? If you have SOPs that uh, you know, basically tell operators to input specific times or, you know, you don't have a complete data set, it's really difficult to um, begin to leverage data as an advantage from that standpoint, right? So the, you know, it's it, you hear garbage in, garbage out all the time. Um, that comes down to operational discipline, um, you know, when you're um, inputting information into the TMS and making sure that it's accurate. Um, and reflective of what actually happened, um, that's obviously critical um, and, and kind of a baseline requirement. Um, and then I think, you know, uh, other challenges that happen from, you know, rolling out data is, you know, once you've kind of understood the data and it's cleaned and, you know, well understood across the organization, it's do the incentives within an organization align with taking a data-driven approach to operations, right? Uh, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of brokers are, you know, have commission plans that are, you know, looking solely at margin, right? And if that's the case, then that's going to drive behaviors that, you know, only look at, you know, the maximizing profitability rather than, you know, service. Companies. So, um, making sure that whatever the incentive structure that you have in place for your organization matches up with the, you know, overall data strategy that you're trying to take is critical. Yeah, it's it's fascinating. Uh, yeah, I, I've I had this struggle in, in past experiences too, like uh, really working with like those fields and making sure, right, that uh, if it's a field that should just be numbers, that there's no letters entered in there at some point. That, and I was it's, it's this culture you almost have to create within your organization to understand, even as a sales rep, what a uh, data analyst's worst fears are, right, as they're working with this stuff. And I think um, from your experience, or maybe from, from the work that you've done and, and the companies that you work with, I think that's part of this, too, is like, what are clear signs that you're building a culture within your brokerage to focus on data? Is there certain roles people should be focused on? hiring or, or certain uh, 
uh, different departments that, that should be added to their infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, of course, you know, having, you know, uh, BI teams and analysts is is kind of table stakes if you wanted to, you know, take a data driven data driven approach to your operation. Um, but like any change management, I think it's education and alignment across the, you know, the leadership group to the, you know, the ground floor operators, right? And having making sure that they understand how they're being evaluated, um, how they're expected to to operate, and what's required to kind of fall in line with those expectations. I think um, educating them on why taking a data-driven approach to operations is, you know, um, beneficial for them and the organization and what that means from an operating standpoint, right? Like if you're going with you know, cheapest trucks, then you're going to have a lot of overhead that's driven by, you know, uh, issues that come up. And those issues just, that's all opportunity costs that's pulling you away from working on more strategic initiatives, whether that's selling, uh, you know, new customers, you know, prospecting uh, your existing customers and trying to get additional loads or sourcing carriers, right? Um, that's value add work. But if you're working with unreliable folks that you you know didn't take a data driven approach, you just went lowest cost provider. That's just waste. Well, a, a big reason I wanted to invite you here, John, is because uh, when we're talking about using data for a competitive uh, nature in this industry, uh, I've been just amazed by the work that you're doing and the the products that you're building for that exact reason. Can you tell our audience a little bit about? what ISO is doing and exactly how you can use ISO uh, and this like the service level aspect of the industry and that data to apply a competitive advantage to your business. Yeah, absolutely. So um, at ISO, we are a, you know, collaborative performance management sys- uh, solution, which is, you know, uh, marketing for scorecards. Uh, we've got a, uh, a collaborative kind of multiplayer uh, scorecarding solution that pulls data from uh, TMSs and uh, networks it across carrier networks, customer networks. So everybody's kind of uh, uh, has an equal understanding of performance um, with regard to a broker or shipper or carrier. Um, on top of that, we have um, a, a benchmarking that we've introduced in a service index that helps everybody understand relative to the market how they're performing. Um, we believe that um, you know, the logistics industry uh, is long overdue for, you know, what's akin to a FICO score for supply chain. We believe that every, you know, broker, every shipper, every carrier, every facility and driver should have um, a, an ISO score, which is an indicator of what level of quality and performance they can expect from working with one another, right? That helps, uh, we think, lay a really strong foundation for automation. Um, by, you know, narrowing the funnel of who should be qualified partners uh, for a transaction. Um, and uh, yeah, we're really excited about the the network adoption. Um, and I think our, our early uh, customers are really excited about having the accessibility to data that would previously, you know, take two weeks by tapping an analyst on the on the shoulder and saying, hey, I'm trying to figure out this or what's dri- driving these issues with that customer. Um, so it's, you know, snappy analytics that's easy to use for the operators and, um, you know, helps them, again, like we've mentioned, lead into their strengths, understand their weaknesses and identify opportunities to shore up those weaknesses, whether it's sourcing external capacity um, or, you know, having strategic conversations with your existing partners to, um, you know, alleviate whatever issues that you're trying to trying to navigate. Yeah, and it's uh, having yourself as this third party kind of lead it, I think, is where it gets very uh, interesting as well. Uh, about a minute here with you, John. Uh, before we let you go, uh, for the future, where do you see data's role uh, maybe growing from where it is now uh, and, and helping brokerages over time? I think the trend will continue, that data will continue to power automation, right? Um, as we've seen over the, uh, the past several years, right? It's kind of shifted from humans doing and leveraging data to augment those uh, those those activities to uh, data getting trained up on automating those activities and then humans kind of over it. So I think that um, we'll continue to see that in a major way, um, leveraging AI, ML, which I'm sure is a hot topic at this conference. Um, 
But uh, I, I think that there's uh, going to be rapid innovation and the amount of data that's available across the industry today is overwhelming. So leveraging those tools to quickly make sense of it much faster than a human being can um, is going to be very powerful. Yeah, I agree. We need to get kind of our hands on this and figure out how we're using data, collecting data. And then the next step is automating a ton of these processes as well. Thank you so much, John, for being a part of this. Uh, we appreciate your time and, and your attendance at this. Yeah, thanks so much, Grace. Always a pleasure. And uh, yeah, hope everybody has a great, great show.